This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More about them later. Hi there everyone and welcome back to the lab. In this video we're going to be tackling the most requested piece of test work on my channel and that's prop testing of 3 and 3.5 inch props. I have got 26 different props to test, some that are designed for open prop quads and some that are designed for ducted sinewoops. We're going to be testing all of them. This video series is going to be a two-part video series. The first part, this part, is going to tackle the test methodology, the test setup, and the performance of props designed for open prop quads, so quads that don't have ducts. In the second part of this video, we're going to be looking at Cinewoop props, the effect of a duct around the prop, what difference that makes, and how Cinewoop props compare to props designed for open prop quads. It's a lot to cover, let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. Let me take you through my test setup here so you can see how I'm collecting all this data. I have this 1585 thrust test stand from Taito Robotics, and if we come up to the front of the thrust test stand, you can see the prop. And the prop is set up in a pusher configuration, which means that it's blowing air in this direction and pushing the thrust test stand in this direction. And the reason I have it set up like that is that there's nothing to this side of the prop. So I have an unobstructed thrust column for the prop, and that gives it the most efficiency. So it's, it's the best to compare different props. If you turn the prop round, there's just all this thrust stand in the way of the thrust column, and that really affects the performance of the prop. Moving backwards, you can see I've got this little white tape on the motor here. That white tape is used to measure the RPM. Every time that white tape passes a little sensor back here, it counts and you can convert that easily to the RPM of the whole system. These two load cells here are used to measure the torque that the motor is exerting on the prop. So the motor twists the prop and then equal and opposite reaction twists the thrust test stand and that load cell measures the twisting force. Then we have an ESC and a board here that measures the voltage and current that's being supplied to the ESC. So we can also measure the, the kind of electrical power voltage and current that the ESC is consuming. Below the ESC, just here, is another load cell, and this load cell is used to measure the thrust that the prop is exerting. So the prop obviously pushes the thrust test stand like this, and this load cell measures the amount of force that's being exerted there. In order to supply the system with power, I've got this XT60 here, and I plug that into a standard 4S battery. And then I also have a power supply that's hooked up which keeps that whole battery system topped up so that the voltage remains constant. And it allows me to test for long periods of time without the battery running down and then there being an effect due to dropping battery voltage. In terms of motors, for the open prop testing, I use this 1504 motor. And then for the ducted props that we're gonna look at a bit later, I use this 2004 Eco2 and this 2005 Brother Hobby with a five mil prop shaft. And that allowed me to test all the different types of props that were available. Obviously, when we're using different motors between the props, we're gonna to need to make sure that our results are independent of the motor that we chose. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I manage that right now. So how can we compare different props tested on different motors in a fair way? Well, we can take advantage of the independence of the prop and motor system. So the motor converts electrical power from the ESC into mechanical power, torque times RPM. The prop takes mechanical power from the motor and converts it to thrust. And the prop doesn't care how the motor generated that mechanical power. It doesn't care about the voltage that was applied. It doesn't care about the current that the motor consumes. It just cares about the mechanical power and the RPM that the motor is generating. So whether we have a big motor or a small motor, if we're measuring the mechanical power and the RPM directly, we have all the information we need to be able to determine how that prop is gonna perform. And if we were to take a different motor and apply the same mechanical power at the same RPM, the prop would perform exactly the same. The prop doesn't care about the KV or any of the other parameters of the motor, just the mechanical power that it's able to generate and the RPM that it's spinning at. So in all of the test results that we're gonna be looking at today, we're gonna to be focusing on mechanical power and RPM, and we're not gonna be looking at voltage and current and electrical power, because that's all motor dependent and it's not comparable. 
So hopefully that explains how we can compare different props on different motors fairly. We're going to start by looking at open prop designs. These are props designed to be run without any sort of duct around them. And you can tell that a prop is an open prop design by the blade shape. If the blade tapers a lot down towards the tip and it has quite a narrow tip, then that's designed to be run without a duct. That's an open prop design. We're going to look at the relationship between thrust and RPM first. One thing that we can see looking at these curves is that the lines don't really cross over each other. So if we pick a point, let's say 25,000 RPM, we can produce a table of values at 25,000 RPM, and that's going to give us an idea of how heavy the prop is um, across its whole RPM range. Looking at the relationship between thrust and RPM, we can see that there's a huge variation even between open prop designs. We've got a difference of three times between the Avon Scimitar, which has nearly 300 grams of thrust at 25,000 RPM, versus the Emacs Avia 3x2, which produces less than 100 grams at the same RPM. And this is going to have a huge effect on how the prop feels in flight. If you have a prop that produces a lot of thrust at a low RPM, like the Avon Scimitar, then that's going to feel like a very powerful prop. It's going to have lots of top end and very punchy in its response. Whereas a prop that produces a lot less thrust, like the Avia 3x2, you're going to have much better low throttle control with a prop like that. It's going to be much easier to modulate your altitude, but you might struggle if the quad is a bit heavier because you just don't have the thrust to, to carry that extra weight. It's also going to affect your motor choice. So a prop that produces a lot of thrust at a lower RPM is going to need a bigger motor to make the most of that power, whereas a prop that is much lighter pitch um, produces a lot less thrust at, at the same RPM, it's going to need a much smaller motor in order to make the most of that and get the, the power that's available. So it's just something to be aware of. Certainly, if you're picking something like that um, Avon Scimitar 3.5 um, or any of these you know, pitchier props at the top end, you're going to want to select a larger motor, maybe 1504, 1505 size. And if you're looking at these very light pitch props like the Avia 3x2, you could probably get away with running that on like a 1303, much smaller motor, or 1204. So that's just something to be aware of when you're selecting the right motor for the prop that you've chosen. The next chart is, I think, the most interesting. Here we're looking at the thrust that the prop can produce on the y-axis versus the mechanical power delivered by the motor on the x-axis. So if we give two props the same amount of power, you would think that they would produce the same amount of thrust, but that's not what we see. In fact, we see that the difference in thrust produced by the best prop versus the worst is 20%. So you're giving it the same amount of power, but you're getting 20% more thrust if you pick the most efficient prop compared to the least efficient. Here we see that the 3.5 inch props come out ahead. The three 3.5 inch props sit significantly above all of the three inch props. But even if we just consider the three inch props, there's still a 10% spread between the most efficient and the least efficient three inch prop. So if you're flying the wrong three inch prop, you could be just throwing away 10% of the thrust that you could be achieving if you were flying a more efficient prop. We can see that similar to the previous chart, the lines on this plot don't cross over each other at all. So if we pick a value, let's say 200 grams of thrust, and look at the efficiency of the prop at that thrust level, we can directly compare the performance of all of the props really easily and know that that's representative of how they perform over the whole range of thrust that they can produce. When we compare the efficiency of all these props at the same thrust level, it becomes a lot easier, I think, to see the differences. The 3.5 inch props are leading the charge in terms of efficiency, and that's as we would expect. A larger prop is always going to be more efficient than a smaller prop, all else being equal, because it's more efficient to generate thrust by moving a large column of air more slowly compared to moving a narrow column of air more quickly. And this is why um, wind turbines have been getting bigger and bigger over the last few years, because that makes them more efficient. And why, if you look at the diameter of engines on jet airliners, they've also been growing and growing over the last you know, 30, 40 years. It's really important for a jet aircraft to achieve the best fuel efficiency and a larger diameter engine is always going to be more efficient than a narrower diameter engine, all else being equal. 
That said, we do still see a pretty big variation in efficiency between the different props. So the Genpan Hurricane leading the charge with the best efficiency at that 3.5 inch size. But the Genfan Wind Dancer 3028 is exceptionally efficient for a 3 inch prop. So if you're looking for that 3 inch size and you're looking for efficiency, the Wind Dancer is definitely going to be the choice for you. And then if you look down at the low end, the HQDP 3x4x3 V1S is not a very efficient 3 inch prop, which is really surprising because the 5 inch V1S prop is really efficient. So obviously that's just not translated to the smaller size. The gem fan flash is the least efficient prop, and I guess we might expect that because it's the, the steepest pitch prop. And typically having a very steep pitch on a prop isn't great for efficiency. So hopefully looking across this, if you're really concerned about efficiency, you can pick the right prop um, by looking at this chart that's going to give you the efficiency that you need for your build. The next thing to look at is advance ratio. And this is a ratio of the velocity of air moving down through the prop to the tip speed of the prop. And it determines how the prop deloads as you go faster and faster. A prop with a large advance ratio is going to be able to achieve a higher top speed than a prop with a lower advance ratio. And so if you're looking to go really, really fast and top speed is what you care about, then you're going to be wanting to pick a prop with a large advance ratio. Here we can see that the Gemfan Flash 3052 has the largest advance ratio followed by the HQDP 3x4x3. So if you're looking to just go really fast and you don't really care about efficiency all that much, then those are going to be the props that you want to pick. The T 3x3x3 also has a good advance ratio and is a little bit more efficient as well. So that might be a good choice if, uh, if you're looking for a balance between efficiency and speed. The final thing to talk about is vibration. And here I'm comparing the vibration generated by the props at 200 grams of thrust. And this is important if you're really interested in having super smooth video, particularly if you're wanting to use um, post stabilization with gyro flow or something like that, and you want the cleanest, smoothest possible footage and the smoothest gyro signal so that you can do the post stabilization. Here we can see that there's a big variation in the amount of vibration produced with the worst prop you know, this HQ T3 by 2 by 2 producing like more than three times as much vibration as the best. So if you're really interested in smooth footage, definitely err on the side of picking a prop that has a low level of vibration at 200 grams compared to a high level of vibration. Just makes it more likely that you're going to get smoother footage. Now that we've looked at all the data, it's time to make some recommendations for different props of different sizes. And we're going to start with the 3.5 inch size. And I think there are two props here that stand out in my testing. The Emax Avon Scimitar 3.5 inch, which is going to be my choice for a prop that's exciting and powerful. If you're looking for an all around prop that kind of has all bases covered, then that's going to be the Gemfan Hurricane 3525. It really has good performance across the board, great efficiency, good power, very smooth. So for an all around prop, that's definitely going to be the choice. And for a prop that if you're just interested in going fast and having a lot of fun with a powerful prop, then the Emax Avon Scimitar. If we come down to the three inch size, again, I've got a couple of recommendations. If you're looking for something fast and exciting, again, I'm going to recommend the Emax Avon Mini prop. That's going to be really nice and smooth, very fast, plenty of power. If you're looking for an all around prop, then I would go with the HQT 3x3x3 because that's a very smooth prop. It's efficient, it's got plenty of punch and power, and it's reasonably fast as well. Not quite as fast as the Emacs, but for an all around prop, I think this is the better choice. So that's my two recommendations for the three inch prop size the Avon Mini and the HQT 3x3x3. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with these recommendations or if you'd suggest a different choice for an open prop 3 or 3.5 inch quad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to leave you with a word from the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a state of the art platform for learning maths, science and data science. If you've enjoyed this video diving into the performance data for FPV props and you want to take your learning to the next level, Brilliant can give you the skills that you need. Whether you're learning purely for fun or to support your career, 
Brilliant's visual interactive approach is an effective and engaging way to master the key concepts behind the technology that we use every day. And beyond the technical know-how, Brilliant also boosts your creative problem-solving skills to help you take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Brilliant was built for busy people with bite-sized lessons that let you master whole topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. Why not take advantage of everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days at the URL brilliant.org slash chrisrosser or follow the link in the video description. The first 200 of you will also get 20% off an annual subscription to Brilliant. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Until next time, happy flying.